we're going to start by discussing the parts of the instrument. This is the sensor. This is where the permanent magnets are and where the coils are that generate the excitation pulses. The sample goes into the sensor. in the uh, port in the front of the sensor here. So here's what the front of the instrument looks like with the port where, with where you put the sample. So this is what the coil looks like that's inside the sensor. And the sample would go inside of this coil and the wires on the outside are what the, create the excitation pulse. The other component is the control unit. There's really not much going on on the outside except for the on-off button. And generally, you want to turn on, on the instrument before you turn on the computer and the software. So we're going to get ready for our measurement and turn on the instrument. So once the switch is on and the cables are connected, it's ready for measurement. The last part of the instrument is the computer. And the computer has all the controls for the different functions of measurement. As with any NMR measurement, radio frequency noise can be an issue. So generally, you don't have any other equipment running in the lab at the same time, particularly cell phones, or anything else that makes RF noise. We try and keep the computer far from the instrument, and it can even be useful to turn off the lights to reduce the 60 hertz uh, power line noise. Our NMR room here is actually a Faraday cage. It's entirely lined with steel, and that helps to keep out some of the other RF noise from the building. So for this lab, we're just going to use four samples and one water blank. And the purpose of the lab is to see how different soil textures affect the NMR response. So in order to do that, we have samples that are sieved and saturated. And they're sieved to these four different levels, 15 to 100 250 microns, 250 to 500 microns, and 500 to 1400 microns. And finally, we have an unsorted sample. This is just sand. This is like what you might find in a sedimentary aquifer or basically just play sand from the hardware store. So there's various grain sizes and then various pore sizes. So we have these samples in these pl clear plastic tubes and they are capped on the ends and every effort possible has been made to get all of the air out of the sample holder. So all the sample holders are the same size. We use this calibration blank um, to set the instrument for the sample size. So if you're using a different size sample, then you have to have a different size calibration blank. But these are all designed to be the same diameter and length, so they're the same sample volume. So in order to make our measurement, the first step is to run the calibration blank. And that's going to give us the maximum signal intensity for that size sample. So we'll get a pure water signal. And we're going to do that by putting in the sample in the instrument and measuring it to get that calibration measurement. So we'll start with our calibration blank. We'll put that in the instrument. And there's a couple things that we need to consider. Number one, we need to have these samples at the same temperature as the instrument. Um, so if you're going to fill your blank or make your samples, you need to leave them for a few hours to let them to equilibrate to the temperature of the lab. The second point is that the positioning inside the sensor is critical. You want the sample to be at the same position in the instrument for every single sample and for the calibration blank. 
So to do that, we can just measure with a ruler. So we'll put our sample in and then make sure the position is correct. So we take our ruler, and in this case, the sample is centered when it's 20 centimeters from the end of the instrument. So each sample is going to be put into that same position. And finally, uh, the temperature is important to be constant, like we said. And we want to measure what that temperature is and record that so we know what the temperature of the sample is when we um, go to data processing. And you can use any sensor you want, but I'm just using the simple thermocouple sensor. The thermocouple sensor and we'll put the probe into the into the tube and get a reading. So right now you can see it's stabilized right around 20.3 degrees. So we'll record that and uh, use that later on. Of course we don't want anything metal inside the NMR instrument so we can't leave this temp sensor in here. So once your sample is in the sensor, you can go to the acquisition software. And here are all the parameters that you can change for each measurement. So our TR on the top left here is the recovery time. This is how long that the instrument's going to wait in between stacks. For our water blank, we need this to be a little bit longer than for the sediment samples just because the bulk water takes longer to relax. The excitation pulse length will stay the same for all measurements, and the echo spacing is that echo spacing for the CMP, uh, CPMG measurements, and 200 microseconds is the fastest this instrument can measure, so we're gonna keep it there. The transmit frequency is set by the magnetic field, so that's gonna be constant, and the data length is the length of time that the instrument will record for. And this could be longer for really high water content samples with large pores, but for this, it'll be fine to leave it at a half a second. The number of averages is your stacks. And for samples with low water content, you would need this to be higher than 20. But since this is a water sample, 20 averages will be fine. So then we'll set our file name before we start measuring. We're going to call this the blank. So once your settings are all done, we can go to start. It's going to ask you if you're ready to go. You'll say OK. And then it'll start to measure. So here you can see these three windows that come up. Basically, they're just for QAQC to make sure the instrument is pulsing as you would expect it to. And you can see this waveform is a function of time that is uh, the CPMG measurement. So there are measurements done. So the next step is to go into the processing software and select your data file. So we'll navigate to our data file. To start off with, you're going to want to leave our calibration factor at 1. That's going to allow us to calculate the calibration factor for the blank so that we can apply that to the sand samples. And then it's going to pop up a few windows that we can then look at. So the first thing that you can see is this is our exponential relaxation. This is the envelope of all of those CPMG uh, pulses. And blue is the data, and the green line in the center is the expon multi-exponential fit. And you can see at the top, you give it total water content, mole, bound, water content, T2ML, and noise. So for this, we don't have any bound water, so that 
would be based on a 33 millisecond cutoff time, but we only have long relaxations here. And the bottom is the results of the inversion where we have this distribution of relaxation times. And this is associated with the exponential relaxation. And in, in this case, we can see the peak of that distribution is really long, which is associated with that bulk water relaxation. At the top, it's reported total water content of 26%. So that's our calibration factor. The next image is showing all of the echoes from the CPMG are reorganized here um, in a vertical stack. And what we're expecting is this sort of flame shape. This flame is really long because it's just water. So it's um, if it's if you're looking at a sand sample, it's going to be shorter. And the center of this is what was extracted to make the exponential relaxation curve, the envelope of all those echoes. The other side is telling us basically a data quality check. It's looking at the phase offset, and we want to see this as all green, uh, meaning there's no phase offset in the sample. And if there is any noise in this, it's usually where there's no water or low water content. So this window is most of a QAQC. Here is another QAQC window, which has to do with the noise level. And so there's nothing to see there really. And here's the frequency spectrum. And we want to see all of our peaks aligned uh, around our frequency and constant throughout all of the pulses. So we can see it's centered around zero and it's constant, meaning it's around the Larimar frequency. And so this is good. So once you have the calibration factor, then you can go into your processor and input the calibration factor. So for us, that was 26.14. So we'll put that in, select the data file, and then process the data again. So all the windows are going to be the same this time, except for the scale on the water content axis. And so now you can see the total water content is 100%, which we know is the case because we have a 100% water blank in the sensor. So that tells us that everything is working correctly and we can move on to this uh, sand samples. So the next thing we'll do is take out our water blank. We'll take out our blank and put it aside. And then we'll start with the smallest grain size sample. So 125 to 200 microns. And we'll put that in the sensor. Before I put it in, it's worth noting that it's really hard to get these samples totally saturated. And in some cases you can see these little areas where they haven't become fully saturated and that might contribute to some measurement uncertainty because there's no water there to be to be responding to the NMR signal. So we do the best we can, but this does happen sometimes. So we have our sand sample in there and we come back to the acquisition software. The only thing we're going to change is this TR because it's a sediment sample. We don't need as long of a, of a recovery time. So that's set. We can say run and now we can just let it measure. I've sped it up here uh, just to save a little bit of time. So now it's done and we can go in and change the sample. So here's our next sample, 250 to 500 microns. Back to the computer. Save a new file name. And then start the measurement. So in between each measurement, there's no settings to change here just because we want to keep everything constant for all of the sand samples.
Our next sample is 500 to 1400 microns. And so you can pretty clearly, clearly see here that this is coarser grain material. And our last sample is the unsorted sand sample. So this is just sand and you can see that there's a variety of grain sizes and pore sizes. Okay, so now that our last sample's done measuring, we can go ahead and start processing the data. So the same processing steps happen for all of the samples, but I'm just going to show you one example for the last one that we did, which is the unsorted sand sample. So here's the important part. For your sediment samples, you need to put in the calibration number. So again, for us, that was 2614, 26%. We go to process data. Immediately you can see a big difference in our NMR relaxation. We have this shorter component where the signal is relaxing faster in early times and we have a longer component where it's relaxing slower at later times. The inverted result are showing this T2 distribution here on the bottom. And it shows this trimodal distribution, which is what we would expect because there's a variety of pore sizes in that mixed sample. And what's shown is that we have some really small pores, some medium ones, and some larger pores. And then this at the end is probably just related to noise because there's probably no bulk water that be, would be relaxing at that very low relaxation time. The total water content is reported as 34.5% and it is divided into bound and mobile as well. We get a T2 ML time, which could be used for something like putting into an SDR equation for estimating permeability. And finally, with this, with 20 stacks, we have a noise level of 3.4%. So here's that flame plot again, and you can see that the flame is much shorter because of course we have no bulk water in this sample. So most of the relaxation is complete after 200 or 250 milliseconds. On the right side, this we have the phase plot and you can see that we have coherent phase where we do have signal and at the later times where we don't have signal, we have less coherence. It's sort of this rainbow staticky pattern, which indicates there's less phase coherence. So here I just wanted to show the difference of the results um, if you use more stacks. So in this case, we have 34% water content, which is pretty similar, but our noise level is gone down to 2.4%. So I used 40 stacks for this one and we were able to reduce our noise down to 2.4% from 3.4. You can also see that because we have higher quality data now, we were able to resolve a slightly different um, relaxation distribution. We still have this trimodal distribution, but we have removed that noise at the really long relaxation times. So we haven't changed the overall message of this sample. It's still trimodal, but we have gotten higher quality data. So it looks a little bit better now. And here's a quick comparison of that flame plot. Um, again, just looking at the data quality here. And you can see the flames a little bit clearer and you can see that there's not too much difference in the phase offset diagram, but you do get slightly more signal at later times. So now that we're finished measuring all of our samples, I just wanted to quickly show how different the sediment actually is in each sample holder. And the way the samples were made by using sieves to break an aggregate sample down into these size ranges. So for our smallest particle size, we have this uh, 
really fine material here. It's pretty similar in size. Although there is probably some really small stuff that snuck in there. For our 250 range, it's a little bit bigger. It's not quite as fine as the previous sample and no large particles in here. For our 500 to 1400 micron sample, you can see that it's kind of a bigger variety of particle sizes just because it's a wider bin. Um, but you do have noticeably larger sand size particles in here. And finally, for our unsorted sample, you can see there's a the full range of particle sizes. And there's some really tiny stuff in there, but also there are these larger class, these kind of chunks of quartz. So that's the end of the description of this lab portion.